information. Virtue counteracts false thinking. Knowledge counteracts false decisions. Temperance counteracts false judgment. Patience counteracts false beliefs. Godliness counteracts false practices. Brotherly kindness counteracts false identity. We'll delve more into that. And if we don't get into it, we have space to answer any questions after the message or during Bible study this week. The power of communion. The first thing that the power of communion allows us to do is to see, as the old song uh, tells us, all obstacles in our way. We can see Satan. And we can already anticipate the ways in which he will come at us. Matthew 4 uh, and Luke 4 give us good representations of the first temptation of Jesus. <laughs> Matthew 4 and Luke 4 give us three temptations. Uh, and I'll characterize them for you. In Matthew, the first temptation that the devil offers to Jesus is to turn the stones into bread. Because he recognizes that Jesus has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And Jesus says, Man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The second temptation in Matthew, he takes Jesus up to the pinnacle of the temple, mm -hmm. and he says, cast thyself from the top of the temple. Mm -hmm. Satan throws some scripture at him this time. He says, for it is written, I have given my angels charge over thee, lest thy dash thy feet against a stone. Right. Jesus says again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The third temptation. Satan shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. He says, All this will be yours if you will but bow down and worship me. Jesus says again, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, for all of our Bible readers in here, you recognize that Jesus combated the temptations with the Word of God each time. I deliberately neglected to say, Jesus said, for it is also written. But those three temptations, the first, as 1 John 2, verses 15 and following inform us, we have to combat the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The first is the lust of the flesh. Oh, Jesus, I recognize you're hungry. Come on, man, you know you have the power to have a feast right here and right now. Do it, man. You know the fuck? I got the power. Yeah, you got the power. Do it. The lust of the flesh. The second the pride of life. Throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. You're the son of God. The angel's going to catch you. You don't have to worry about your security. I want to see you do it. <clears throat> pride of life. The third, lust of the eyes. All the kingdoms of the world. will be yours if you but bow down and worship me. It's not rocket science. The power of communion first allows us to see what we're up against. To recognize that in us which opens the door 
to the temptations that Satan will throw against us individually and as we are one in the body of Christ. So how have we taken that for granted over this past week? Thinking that we had in us that power to withstand the temptation. Even Jesus had to combat the temptation with Scripture. <coughs> See, oftentimes we, we uh, try to confound or confuse ourselves with the question, what would Jesus do? <laughs> when it's simple. All we have to do is crack open the Bible and reference the Word to find out what Jesus did and continues to do. <clears throat> but that's the first thing that the power of communion allows us to do. It allows us to see, I mean really see, what we're up against. And it reestablishes the preeminence of the Word of God in our lives. Amen. You know, this is important because 